G'day YouTube, Dylan O'Donnell here. Now when we're doing astro photo processing, there's a few steps in the workflow. The workflow for me is basically get rid of the bad data, register the data, stack the data, then do any color processing. And then the final steps after I resize the image for the web. So you resize the image to where you want it to go. Then I do the denoise and sharpen. Now those steps, denoise and sharpen, are something that we typically use any number of different tools for depending on what we want to do. It can be a regular denoise, it can be a denoise in Pix Insight, or you could be doing deconvolution for sharpening. There's all sorts of different ways. But I saw recently that Topaz released an AI suite, artificial intelligence. And of course my curiosity was piqued and I went out and bought the suite to see if I could use the AI tools to improve the images somehow. And I'll show you about using artificial intelligence to improve your astro photos. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. worthwhile me shouting out a sponsor. So thank you to High Point Scientific for sponsoring this video. High Point Scientific are a great company and we get great feedback about them. They can service basically most of the planet, especially the Northern Hemisphere. They support their products, they have a price match guarantee and they will help you as consultants if you have questions about astronomy or to achieve what you're trying to achieve. So hit up the links in the description for High Point Scientific and drop my name, I'm sure they'll look after you. So artificial intelligence in 2019 is mostly about undressing people and maybe swapping someone's face out or maybe the scary premise of the robot revolution. AI will be driving our cars. They took our job. We can actually use some of those algorithms to improve our photo processing. And let's see if they work. Okay, so first I'm going to show you this Topaz Gigapixel AI because it is amazing. Let's just say you're on your girlfriend's Facebook and her cousin's bridesmaid was pretty hot and she's uploaded a pretty grainy thumbnail image uh, of her that you'd like to uh, blow up just for scientific reasons. Uh, so here we have an example of a low resolution image and Gigapixel AI can upscale it. So it upscales up to six times and the decisions it's making here are based on its internal algorithms and artificial intelligence that then sort of work out that it's looking at a face, working out that these are eyelashes, that this is a reflection and making decisions based on that. Uh, and it's pretty incredible. So let's just run that one and see what the output looks like. So let's take a look at the original image. Uh, that's 100% there. And let's take a look at the upscaled image. That's at 19%. So if I zoom in to say 50%, uh, you can see that it's actually done a pretty good job of upscaling it. And instead, let's try an image of Jupiter. Here we go in the preview tool. We can see the great red spot here, telling it to upscale six times, and it's made some decisions here. Now, I have a feeling that the algorithm kind of is looking for a material, and it looks like it's got this stone wood grain kind of finish. I don't think that it actually knows about astrophotos at all, or its AI hasn't been trained. Uh, let's just run it and I can show you the difference. Um, okay, Jupiter's done. Ugh, so that's the original. That's the 100% we started with. And this is the upscale. This is just 50%. Uh, let me just resize this window. And that is not great. I don't think we've gained anything quality-wise at all. It would have been far better for me just to upscale this in Photoshop. Of course, the best way to upscale is using Drizzle. Um, so if you're using Auto Stack at 2 for planetary, for example, you use Drizzle integration to upscale the image. And if you're using, um, if you're doing deep space stuff, uh, I use PixInsights Drizzle. I've got a whole separate video on that. That's the proper way to do it. So this tool, as impressive as it was on Bell Delphine, I'm going to say no for, um, for astronomy. It just doesn't seem to do very well. 
Okay, the next tool I want to test here is um, the denoise. Now I've got a fairly noisy high ISO image here, uh, some nice bokeh that I've taken outside under the Milky Way. Um, pretty noisy, so it, it needs uh, denoising. Now in here I'll do a regular denoise. Uh, it gives you a preview of the denoise. We're not doing anything yet. We adjust the overall strength. I'll put it right up to 15. And that's buttery smooth. Uh, quite quite a nice denoise. It's one that I use a lot. Uh, let's try that again with the AI version though. Now it's going at the same level but it looks pretty much the same. I can't see any appreciable difference. Okay, to compare them, let's uh, flick between them. This is the regular Topaz denoise, and this is the AI denoise. Let's try that again. Regular AI. Regular AI. Now take note of this bokeh here, and look at the detail inside it. With the regular denoise, a lot of the detail is lost. With the AI denoise, it's in there. It's some sort of artificial texture, and I'm, I'm not sure what. But also look at this little grain of hair or debris here. If I click on the AI denoise, it's much sharper. So in my opinion, the AI denoise actually does do a better job in this instance. Let's put these things together. Here is an image that um, I did a while ago. I've um, a hard drive crashed and I've lost the original data, but I still have this JPEG here. It's super noisy. I definitely didn't get enough data on it. Uh, but it's also small. This is at 65%. If I zoom into 100%, you can see it's pretty small. It's not going to uh, to do much. So uh, let's try and resize it. Here it's making some decisions and keeping those stars nice and sharp. I'm just going to go four times so it's not as extreme uh, and it's not making so many decisions. Uh, but if I move across here, we've got some dust detail. Oh, it's looking a bit weird. Um, but this is going to be zoomed out later, so let's give it a go. Okay, that's done, so let's take a look at the processed image. Whew, that's at 31%. In fact, if I go to 100%, <laughs> you already get a, get a tiny little corner. All right, there's our 25% image. Um, let's select the Topaz Denoise A. Okay, that's at 15%, and you can see weird things are happening to the stars. Um, there, any kind of blur on the edge of the star has been exaggerated into like a spiky line coming off. So they look like, well, they look like spermatozoa swimming around space. Um, I'm going to maybe increase this and be quite severe because I want those clouds to be super fluffy. All right, that's done, and sure enough, the clouds look pretty good. Like, considering we started with a tiny little image that I could barely zoom into, um, this looks sort of cool. The clouds are fluffy, but the stars are messed up. Um, so, of course, you probably know what I'm thinking. The solution is to mask. Okay, so we've got the noisy layer on top, and we have the smooth layer on the bottom with the messed up stars. So, uh, what I want to do is create a layer mask on this top one. I'm going to copy everything in that uh, smooth layer and I'm going to option click or alt click into the layer mask and paste it in. Uh, now what this is going to do is because it's a black and white mask it's going to and we've got the how do I explain this on top we have the image which has good stars and bad dark patches so we're going to block those dark patches from showing through. We don't need to invert this. Uh, the white will let stars through. The black will stop the uh, stop this top layer from showing. So when we can when we look at it, that's done its job. The clouds are still nice and smooth. And if we zoom in a bit, the stars aren't as bad. They're still a bit messed up because of that upscale. Um, but they're not so bad at a lower resolution. So I've upscaled it without any appreciable loss of detail. In fact, it's the AI has added a little bit of detail. So that's pretty cool. It's a good tool to have in your toolkit. I wouldn't lean on it a lot. I don't like some of these artifacts that show up. Um, you can see there's little black halos around these stars, which aren't so good. So 
maybe some more careful masking required here. Uh, but if you do have a small astrophoto or you want to increase something's size or you just want a really nice denoise, I think the Topaz Deep AI denoise is pretty cool. However, I would love for them to actually train the AI on astro stuff. It's clearly trained on terrestrial stuff. It's trained on people. It's trained on um, objects, I, I assume. I don't know how the technology works, but it doesn't seem to know exactly what's going on in an astrophoto. And you end up with these textures, which I think are textures from Earth, I'm assuming, but I could be wrong. Um, anyway, it doesn't look too bad. And I finished another image. It's the same image of M8, which was in the SHO color palette, the narrowband with the RAS 8. But I got out and I put the QHY 12 CCD color camera on, got some color data and merged that color data into the HA. So it's a HA RGB image. And I really like it. It looks so cool. And I didn't actually use Topaz AI for this. I used the regular denoise, I wanted something a bit more consistent, but I think it's a bit of a watch this space on this technology. But the AI is scarily good at upscaling hot chicks, which says more about humanity than AI. Well that's it for today's episode of Star Stuff, I hope it was informative. Thanks for everyone who has been tagging me in their photos. I really appreciate the tag and I love seeing your work. If I skip a week here or there uploading a video, it's because I'm studying, so apologies in advance. Anyway, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.